Hello, I hope this video finds all of you doing well. Now that the stressful Christmas season is out of the way, it is December 26. Um, before I get going, if you like this video and you get a chance to check out some other videos, I invite you to subscribe and uh, to please smash down on the like video here and uh, help this video get circulation. Um, I said about all I had to say about what was going on with Hamas and Israel for a season, and, and I know that we're all just kind of watching to see what's going on. Um, I am not inclined to read into something, something that is not there, um, as I've shared in uh, previous videos, and enough speculation has been spread out there lately that um, uh, I choose not to comment on only in the sense that uh, if there's something clear in scriptures, we'll look at it, we examine it, and then we, we try not to impose upon the scripture what is not there, but we read the scripture and we pray for discernment. We ask the Lord for wisdom. We know that we're in the last days and um, we don't know how long that's going to take. God has his plan. He works his plan. Um, we know that probably the next really big event and God's agenda in his time frame is going to be uh, the destruction of Damascus, where it is a city no more, no more being dwelt in. That's how devastating the uh, destruction will be. And or maybe concurrent will be the Gog and Magog war that we see in Ezekiel 38. And uh, so clearly all these nations that are mentioned therein are in place. And uh, as it's been put before, I like the terminology, there is a shelf life to these things. Um, we have all these countries staged right over the border into Syria and surrounding areas right around Israel. And um, there is no way that these nations, such as uh, um, Iran and uh, Russia, are going to pick up and go home. It costs way too much money. There's way too many materials, um, not just people, but other assets, equipment, food, you name it. They're not going to just pick up and go home and say, oh, now we, we can push this out another 10, 20, 30 years, 100 years. There's a shelf life to this stuff. And it doesn't look like things are calming down. It looks like, if anything, things will heat up even more. Hamas is um, small potatoes compared to what Lebanon will bring and or Iran. And so it's just a... a a small matter of all those things heating up all the more. The only thing that um, is great about this, that's wonderful about this at all, is as the troubles come upon this earth, we are promised uh, most explicitly in Revelation 3.10 that we will escape this trial that is coming upon the whole world um, to try those who dwell upon the earth. So in order for this trouble to try those who are dwelling upon the earth, and yet we, the church, be um, rescued, as Jesus promises to do in Revelation 3.10, is if we are not among those who are dwelling upon the earth. Um, therefore, the rapture that we read in 1 Thessalonians 4.17, um, where we are caught up, hapazo, to meet the Lord in the air, in Latin, it's uh, where we get the word rapture. So that's the only thing that's exciting about that, and that's not a small thing, because that also means Jesus returns all the way to the earth. We don't meet the Lord in the air. He returns all the way to the earth with his saints at the second coming seven years later. That said, um, I would invite you to um, look at your Bible. I'm going to be using the ESV. Um, I'm liking the ESV a lot lately, but in the book of Habakkuk, I want you to um, 
read along with me and take a look at some things and you might want to get a, a pencil out and underline some things or um, a highlighter or what have you <coughs> excuse me and take a look at some of these things some of the wording of these things in Habakkuk um, I'm sure it's just a coincidence but um, look at Habakkuk chapter 1 this is the oracle that Habakkuk the prophet saw Habakkuk's complaint verse 2 O Lord how long shall I cry for help and you will not hear remember Habakkuk here is reading on behalf of Israel so this is Israel crying out to the Lord or cry to you violence that's interesting the word violence you've probably heard this it, the word for violence in the Hebrew is Hamas that's where the word comes from Hamas or cry to you Hamas and you will not save why do you make me see iniquity and why do you idly look up wrong destruction and violence are before me strife and contention arise so the law is paralyzed and justice never goes forth for the wicked surround the righteous so justice goes forth perverted well, that said I will not say that that Israel is living in a state of righteousness at this time um, they're in a righteous position and they are righteously and rightly chosen by God Israel has almost never been faithful hello we'll read the whole book of Hosea and that's about Israel's unfaithfulness playing the harlot going after other gods this has been her plight since the founding of Israel there's nothing new there was nothing new in the first century with Israel and uh, a lack of faithfulness this is why Jesus was always going after the Pharisees um, so this is Israel's plight this is uh, what is going to follow is going to be judgment on Israel. We do see that there is judgment on Israel, but then there's going to be restoration that's promised. Restoration restoration is promised in Hosea. Restoration is promised in the rest of the scriptures as we also read, particularly Romans 9 to 11, and, but in particular to chapter 11. We'll continue to read. This is the Lord's answer to Habakkuk, verse 5. Look among the nations and see. Wonder and be astounded, for I am doing a work in your days that you would not believe if told. For behold, I am raising up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, who march through the breadth of the earth to seize dwellings not their own. To seize dwellings not their own. This is interesting. I want to bring this up for you here, if I can. Um... Bear with me a moment, please. Okay. Ta-da! Okay. The Chaldeans. This is the Chaldean nation. Notice the orange here. Recalling who is attacking Israel right now. So we've got uh, along the border here. Um, I don't know if my cursor is coming across or not. But if you look at Israel and you see along the beach there at Mediterranean Sea, just below Lebanon, and in fact up into Lebanon, who is attacking Israel? And we know some of these attacks are being lobbed from Syria. Now also uh, south into Jordan and south of Jordan, we also see this with Yemen. But uh, this particular prophecy um, from uh, Habakkuk is about... Um, Chaldea right here they're mentioned specifically um, the Chaldeans were in particular mostly Iraq a little bit over the border included a little bit of Iran so um, that's this some of these people here let's continue reading um, okay to seize dwellings not their own verse 7 they are dreaded and fearsome their justice and dignity go forth from themselves. They look at themselves they're, from their pers own perspective. Justice, they are just and dignified. And the rest of the nations are right in there with them. Yeah, yeah, you go kill, murder the Jews. They want to wipe them all out, right? 
Um, verse 8, their horses are swifter than le leopards, uh, more fierce than the evening wolves. And I don't know if that's a reference to the horses, if that means they're all the motorcycles, motorbikes, and things that came riding in over the borders, but that would certainly fit. But I don't want to read too much into it. But but he's just talking about how swiftly they move in and attack. That's what this is about, and they're and they're fierce. Um, their horsemen press proudly on. Their horsemen come from afar. They fly like an eagle, swift to devour. Hmm. Even over some fences, right? They fly like an eagle, and in this case, they actually did. The eagle usually is, is meant to refer to um, swiftness and speed. But in this case, literally, Hamas was coming, was flying over the fences. So I think that's interesting. Could be coincidental, though. They all come for violence or for Hamas. All their faces forward. They gather captives like sand. You just scoop them up, right? Verse 10. At kings they scoff. So all the... the Leaders in the world, whether it's the United Nations or whether it's presidents or whoever, um, they scoff. And at rulers, they laugh. They laugh at every fortress. For they pile up earth and take it. What you got to do to make tunnels, right? They pile up earth and they take it. And they sweep by like the wind and go on. Guilty men, whose own might is their God. They worship themselves, basically, their own might. So, and then the rest of it, I encourage you to read it, but um, here God talks about so much of what he sees going on here, and, and God will move on, in, and um, he will judge Israel, as he says he will do, even in Isaiah, and even as he does say in Jeremiah and Ezekiel and other passages. The tribulation will be about um, discipline and, and judgment of Israel for unfaithfulness. But it'll be uh, really a quite a calamitous judgment upon the nations who go after Israel. Israel is God's to judge. Um, as we read in Hosea, uh, that Israel is, is like a, um, she's like a, a bride to Yahweh, the father. Um, and it's for him to judge, not the nations. Um, the nations aren't judging Israel out of a sense of, of righteousness um, and indignation on behalf of God. Vengeance is God's, and he will judge. So he will judge Israel for her unfaithfulness, but he will restore Israel. Israel will, will repent. Israel will recognize Jesus as their Messiah, and we'll um, turn it around um, by the time you get to the Great Tribulation and we'll worship Jesus as their Messiah. The nations will be judged. Not all. There's always a remnant. Not every last person in Israel, but there's always a remnant. So these are the end times. Keep an eye on these things. Read Habakkuk. You should read. Really, you should read all of the minor prophets. Joel, in particular, Jesus borrowed heavily from Joel when he did his Olivet Discourse. So, anyway, that's all I have to say about that for now. Um, comment below what you think, if there's any further verses later on that you think are, uh, in particular, applicable, if not prophetic directly about these events, certainly applicable, right? We can say that much. I'm not going to say that it's a fulfillment of all these things that Habakkuk, Habakkuk was seeing and that Habakkuk was writing about these events, but it's applicable. Um, we can look at this and we can see how God's response is. God's response is going to be that you shouldn't have done that. And uh, God's response is going to be to judge the world, and that's going to be the tribulation that's forthcoming. So um, now that the seasons are over, as we watch the things, events going on in the world, and as we watch events uh, happening in Israel, um, send me questions, send me remarks, and I'll try to do some more videos. I'm, I, I try not to do this all the time and try to clog things up with, oh, no, here's another one-hour video with all this yakety-yak and not saying anything. Um, if I have something to say, I'll, I'll 
try to record it and I'll say it. And if not, I'll just I'll just keep my mouth shut. But um, not that not that my publisher is happy about that. My publisher wants to see me do lots of regular social media things, but you know I'm just not that guy. So uh, if you have questions, I will though. So be blessed. Um, have a blessed New Year, and uh, maybe we'll talk sometime before then, especially if there's some really good questions or really good points in your comments down below. Share this, like it, and subscribe. Thank you much.